So we've been doing an experiment. We've been co-investigating together. I like to experience Buddhism. I don't, I don't think that the Buddha was particularly philosophical. He didn't sit down and think about things a lot, you know, come up with some clever ideas, concept, design, plan, execute. I think he just sat down and looked very carefully and connected with his own heart. And of all the Brahma Viharas, we, we, we put a lot of emphasis on metta, but the, Buddha's, the Buddha himself is most known for compassion. They, they don't talk about the Buddha with metta. They talk about the Buddha with compassion. Of course, the Buddha had metta, but it's compassion that gets this emphasis. And the other aspect of the Buddha's, you know, of the so many wonderful qualities of the Buddha is obviously wisdom. So wisdom has this nature of seeing the flaw. So there's three very important flaws that we, the Buddha points out, that all things are anicca, anatta. And we could handle that, right? We can handle anicca, we can handle anatta. Anicca meaning impermanent, subject to change. Here today, gone tomorrow. Okay, no problem, change. Change is normal, you know? The other day I was driving through Singapore and somebody was saying, this change has slowed down here, it's like it was a bad thing, you know, like cha that more change is good. All the buildings should be ripped down and build up new ones. I was here thinking, well, there's still a lot of change happening. It's still changing here. Anatta. We talk a lot about anatta as well in Buddhism. It's quite unique to Buddhism, anatta. That's a process. There's no controller. There's no supreme being. There's no ultimate force. And there's no will that can control things. We're suffering, and if we really had the power, we could change our suffering, right? If, if, if there was this atta, if there was this ability. But there is no ability to do so. It's just a process. Anatta. We can handle that, too. Let's face it. You know, the government, they do their thing. You know, we do our thing. It's okay. We can handle the, the control, no control thing, really, yeah. But it's dukkha that gets us in the end, right? Sucker, suffering. Without the stick, none of you would be here. Maybe you, you understand suffering from different aspects. Maybe the impermanence of the situation, the suffering that you get from the impermanence drives you to be here. Or maybe it's the suffering that you get from the non-control, the uncontrollability. No parent can control their child. No, par no child can be free of the control of their parent or Nobody has will over themselves. Nobody can be as beautiful as they want to be or as smart as they want to be or anything like that. It's, it's, this, it's this damn suffering. So here we have a beautiful teaching from the Buddha, compassion. What to do with suffering? Make it your object of meditation. Completely crazy. You will never see this on any advertising board in town, on the bus, anywhere. Have you ever seen Chanel, it sucks? <laughs> <laughs> no? I mean, of course, they're trying to say if you use Chanel that it'll kind of smell better. Life will smell a whole lot better if you use Chanel. Why? Because life stinks. <laughs> and Chanel is going to improve the situation. It's going to give you less suffering. So when we look around the world, there's all kinds of solutions to suffering. And sure, they work. Uh, you know, there's many wonderful things. Humanity has this a great ability to find solutions to problems. But really, really profound is this teaching of compassion. I mean, I think many religions promote compassion, but, you know, to really come out and, you know, have a lot of you here on your holiday come in and sit down in pain on an uncomfortable floor and have me point it out to you that this is damn uncomfortable and you to get relaxed and meditate on this. 
Isn't that weird? Did anybody feel that this was Guantanamo? Right? Did anybody feel that they were being tortured by this kind of instruction to relate to your pain with compassion, to your discomfort? Huh? Isn't that strange? I'm, I'm, we're investigating this together, right? You've got the evidence on me, right? You can report me. Have my work pass revoked for <laughs> group torture. <laughs> he made us sit on a floor and then dwell on it, contemplate it, <laughs> bring it up. What do you think? You have the evidence. What happened to you? Did you get calm, peaceful? Did your mind get bright and happy? Did you notice a space open up? Or did you notice it getting constricted and dark and evil thoughts coming into your head, I'm going to kill this guy? <laughs> what happened? You have the evidence. Huh? You can report me. You've got all the other people around you. You can get like, we've got a hundred sample sets here. What happened? What happened when you felt compassion for your own suffering? Did you feel more relaxed or more painful? Relaxed. I hope so. I felt, I felt, I didn't feel the hate. <laughs> okay, I didn't feel the hate. There was, there was an ease, there was a comfort. I, I, I would feel it up here. <laughs> And it would it would be coming at me. And so the object of compassion is suffering. We want things to be nice, but hey, you know, the world doesn't serve up nice all the time. We're parents, we're you know, we, we work, we have difficulties, we have issues. What do we normally do when we have difficulties? We act because we've got habits. We've got conditioning and we've got kind of nature, we've got genetics. But here's a teaching that sort of says, hang on, let's step back. Let's look at it a little bit. Okay, this is with an attitude, an attitude of compassion coming in. Let's bring a little compassion to this situation. But we have to build compassion for ourselves. And one way to do that is through memory experience, you know, some past memory that we plug in and play. So this, most of us have been experiencing having a baby in our arms and it crying and we're trying to comfort it or a young child or an animal. We can do this. We can remember these things. So we can cultivate in times when we're not really that upset. It's not easy to have meditation and all that when we're really upset. So don't give yourself the instruction, I'm really suffering here, I'm really upset, I'm going to go and meditate, you know, like, and I'm going to look at compassion and I'm going to get calm, because you're going to add to your suffering. So there's a lot of skillfulness required in meditation. But you can be opportunistic, like some things happen on the, um, you know, on the news all the time. The news likes negative stuff, right? News is basically bad, bad news. So you can pick up items that appeal to you, that resonate with you, that are meaningful to you as an example of suffering. I was talking this morning with people about this, you know, nu nuclear accident at Fukushima and there was this, you know, a picture that went around the world that captured, you know, that touched people's hearts. I mean, despite being bad news, people, news really wants to touch your heart with a beautiful story and there was one of this baby had been washed 10 kilometers from its home and the, the, like a fire officer, like he had the helmet and he had all the safety gear on, was cradling this baby in his arms. And it just, it just that was compassion for me. That was the picture of it for me. And I was briefly talking this morning about a beautiful sculpture that's uh, by Michelangelo, I think. It's in Italy, it's called La Pieta. It's, it's, a, it's a sculpture of 
Jesus taken down off the cross, being, being mothered by his mother, holding the corpse of her son. And it's, it's, it's incredibly kind of passion, and it evokes this passion of, of uh, empathy, where we can empathize with the suffering of the mother. Uh, I'm not asking you to be Christians. I'm just asking you to think about beautiful <laughs> things here, you know? <laughs> I can't think of a Buddhist image that's like that. That's all. Maybe there's an, uh, how to say, an opportunity <laughs> to do a Buddhist version of, the, of Michelangelo's work. But these feelings are universal. And, uh, you know, in Christianity, we have to pick up where there is compassion. In Islam, there is compassion taught as well. So we can't just focus on other aspects. It's things unique to Buddhism are things like anatta. That is a process. There's no God driving this. That's what really stands out. And also the skillfulness in Buddhism. There's a method given here. There's no, like, oh, you know, just get over it and just, you know, that, that you know, have a bit of compassion, you know, put some money in the box. I mean, that's what works. But here are some really, you know, clear instructions how to do it. Was it complicated this morning, the instructions? Take suffering as an object and be with it. Be with it in yourself and be with it in all other beings and do it in all, develop the compassion, the sense of compassion, the emotion, and for all beings in all directions. That's what we did this morning. Very simple, clear instructions the Buddha is giving on how to do this. So how did he know this? How did the Buddha know this? Was it some magic power? He knew it because he did what you did. Right? He just looked into his own suffering. So it tells you a lot about the Buddha, you know? He was a person who suffered. And he looked at his suffering very carefully. And if you want to know how to change your suffering, change the causes. Suffering is an effect. Look at the causes. But we can't just skip over the causes. Somebody comes to you and they're in pain, they're in suffering. We all want to have the quick remedy and the solution, be their friend, you know? Why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? Here's an instant remedy. And you know, sometimes people are really quick or they have a trust in you and they, they can take that from you. But you know what? A lot of the time they just want you to be there and connect. I get it. You know, I get it. That sort of thing happened to me. You know, let's be with this for a while. Let's just be in connection with each other. Wouldn't that be a good friend to have when you're in trouble? Somebody who is really listening rather than trying to give you a Band-Aid. This kind of tendency to give a Band-Aid is called sympathy. <coughs> sympathy sounds like my husband got, your husband just got laid off. Well, at least you have a job. Your son got kicked out of Anglo-Chinese. <laughs> at least your daughter is scoring A's at Raffles. <coughs> at least. It's one of the telltale markers of sympathy, not empathy. <sighs> I get it. Your husband got laid off. That's going to really put you in a bind. 
I don't know how you feel about that, but I'm just really glad you told me. How does that feel like to you? How does that sound? This is the difference between sympathy and empathy. Empathy is just being with the person wholeheartedly. This is a beautiful, beautiful feeling to have. And this is why it's one of these very lofty meditations in Buddhism. This is the, the view of the world that the Brahmas have. So when we were on the, the satellite going around the earth and embracing the whole planet, the, you were in the Brahma Loka there. That was it. Taking a compassionate view of all beings and all suffering. That was it. You were in the Brahma mansion right there when you can do that. That is the experience of Brahma Loka. Was that hard to do? Could you apply this in your life? I think so. I think all of us can do this. All of us suffer and all of us can have compassion. So what happens when we have compassion? Do you think we get nightmares? No, we don't. We go to sleep easily because we're not too worried about the world, really. You know, we, we, we accept that the world is a difficult place at times. Things are not going to go perfectly well. We don't, we, don't, we don't have bad dreams. We don't have the nightmares because we sleep easily. Because we're at ease with the difficulties of the world. We wake up easily because we've slept well. When we meet other people, other beings, they're not threatened by us. Isn't it nice to meet somebody who's compassionate? Of course they'll be happy to meet you. Other beings will be happy to meet you, your dogs and your cats. You know, if they're suffering, they know that you're the person to go to because they're going to get looked after. You're a caregiver. You're caring. You look beautiful. You know, this is my we're better than Chanel bit. You really will look more beautiful. Why? Because caring is a very beautiful look. Huh? You think the hard aggro, you know, sharpish look is really what you want to be with? It might look okay on a poster or something like that, but it's not where you, you know, it's not, it's not where, the, where you really want to be. So if you want to be attractive in the real sense of the word, be caring, look caring. You know, if you, if you be caring, you will look caring. And it, it, it will pull in people, <laughs> lots of people. You'll be popular. And when you face the difficulties that life presents, sickness, old age, and death, you can really face them as realities, as the way things are, with a whole lot of care and compassion for yourself and for, the, for your family around you. You can be with it, not wishing it to be otherwise, not fantasizing it was differently, or this isn't how I expected things to go. This is how you, you face the difficulties of life, with compassion. With compassion, you can face them. Without compassion, for yourself or for others, you know, the doctor screwed up and da 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 you know. This is lack of compassion. So with compassion, <sighs> you know, this is the way it is. This is, how, this is how it's going down. So we can face death with ease. And I think this is really a challenge we all will face. This is the one guarantee I can give you today. A lot of things are subject to impermanence, but not death. 
That is the certainty. So if we're ready for a certainty, I think that that's as good as we can do. That's really good stuff. And if you can die with compassion, guess where you get reborn? Brahmaloka. Why? Because that's how you think. That's your habit. That's the way you are. So that will bring you to a good destination. So these are some really important benefits from the practice of what we've been just doing. It's very practical, sleeping, <coughs> your relationships with others, and the big picture stuff of, of how life will serve it up no matter what you do, no matter where you live, and a good destination to boot. Not bad. And everybody in this room were able to do that. As they say, goes, this ain't no rocket science. But this will certainly lift you to another level of humanity, civilization. And why should we do this as Singaporeans? Why bother? Well, I think there's at least, I don't know, on a working day, seven million people crammed into this island. I mean, on a working day, they come in from Johor. Everybody's squashed in here, right? You're living in condos or HDBs, mostly. You know, you're getting into jam-packed roads and public transport. You're heading to, you know, high occupancy, high density buildings. Do you really think it helps to be going around with an attitude <laughs> that this sucks? <laughs> you know? No, you're just building up a situation where you're, you're fighting with the world the way it is. It's not the way the world really is. And it's not, you know, you want to you wanna live where there's nobody? Go live where there's nobody. It's not called Singapore. You know? You want to live it with, you know, whatever it is, between five and seven million people, I don't, depending on whether they're working or not, you know, day or night, weekend or not. But when there's a lot of people here. So to be civilized, we're not savannah land. This isn't, you know, where the tiger, you know, the fight for the existence and all the rest. Most of you have food in your stomachs. Most of you have your needs met. This is a, a remarkable city for this kind of ability. We are doing okay. We have our needs met. So what matters is how are we as human beings? Are we civilized? Are we growing? Are we bawana? The real meaning of this word meditate is to grow. It, it doesn't mean meditate, it means grow. Are we growing as humans? Are we growing our heart? Are we growing our mind? Are we open to the situation that we're in? Or are we just shutting down, being negative, being angry, hating the situation for what it is? And hating ourselves for who we are? How are we interacting with this world? So that's this heart connection. It's our heart that's doing all this connection with the world. We can have good connections or bad connections. We can have skillful connections or unskillful. We can have things the way we want or we can have things the way they are. And I really suggest that you get with the reality. Things are the way they are. Not the way I want them to be. Not the way I don't want them to be. So we can do this. All of you have done it today. This has been a successful experiment for me. A hundred plus people could empathize, could connect with compassion, with their own suffering and the suffering of others. And they did it in a crowd. This is as dense as it gets in Singapore, pretty much. Unless you're trying to get all onto the <laughs> 515 MRT out of City Hall, right? <laughs> this is about as dense as it gets. We can do it. Compassion is really good up close and personal. This is where it's really useful. You don't have to be in some quiet little forest corner and some still forest pool. Where you need compassion is at four, at 5.15, trying to get <laughs> into that damn train on City Hall. That's where you need compassion, for yourself, first and foremost, for, for this. You know, forget about being the martyr. 
You know, there's no martyrs in Buddhism, which is uh, really good. W start with yourself, develop compassion for yourself, then have compassion for the world, for your fellow travelers on the MRT, on the train, on the bus, in the traffic jam, stuck at the lights. You know, this is where the action is for compassion. Seeing parents struggling with their kids, screaming, their kids are struggling because they're in difficulty and can't explain why. All of these are compassionate opportunities. Opportunities for us to care, care for ourselves, care for the world. Anyway, I'd like to feel, to I've been trying to ask questions as we've been going along. Let's call them inquiries. Have you any inquiries? Uh, let us rejoice by saying sadhu three times. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So it's uh, inquiry time. Anyone have any questions? We're co-investigators, they're inquiries, right? We're looking, we're looking, getting our own information. Yeah, thank you, Bhante. Uh, my question is that, the, regarding to your compassion where you bring us to uh, relate to the uh, people here, to your own people, to this building and to the world, it is it's easier for us to relate to uh, that compassion with people we know, even with people in this room. But when we move away from this room to the, uh, the building, to Singapore, to other places, mm. it becomes detached. That's, that's how I feel. I mean, I've been practicing this thing for yeah. many, many times, and it's like that. Yeah. Yeah. So my question is that, first, is it natural or na unnatural? And if it's so, why? And can we jumpstart and, and make it all mm -hmm. very attached, you know, whether, whether it's near or far? Yeah, you, 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 so the question, question, as I understand it, I'm going to repeat it back is as we, we move from the personal to the global, we, it becomes more um, detached. 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 And that's, 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 that's correct. What would be a problem for me is if you, you, went, you, know, you went national here and got annoyed with your boss. You know, that would be not having compassion and that would be getting like bogged down into uh, a, an enemy or something that's difficult, difficult to have compassion for. So that's why I personally like to do it by location rather than by uh, specific groups, like sometimes they'll teach compassion, like do it for a friend, neutral person, an enemy, and so on. Like it's really hard to have compassion for enemies. They've hurt you. It may be the, 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 the tonic for the troops, but it, it's hard to get there. So give yourself a lot of compassion about getting there. Then what we're trying to move in this meditation from is the personal I to the we, to the feeling. You know, we're trying to develop compassion, not I or we, you know? We're moving from the I to the we, to, the, to just this raw f uh, emotion of, of compassion. Because this is an attitude, how we approach other beings. We're actually leaning into the object. The object is I or you <coughs> or we're leaning in. We can lean in with friendliness, we can lean in with compassion, we can lean in with sympathetic joy, or we can just sort of st st look on with equanimity, with upeka. Upeka means to look on. So these are the attitudes that we can take. Are we leaning in? Or are we just looking on? You know? So this is how we can live. So that, as you've been describing, is, is how we do it. I hope that answers your question. It's an experience. Thank you. Uh -huh. Maybe you can just shout it out. I'll try to relay back. Actually, I've got a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I think it's great that you are talking about compassion because yeah. and asking us to focus on ourselves first before we uh, yeah. try to extend this compassion to others. But yeah. uh, at the same time, I think uh, what happens when we reach that point of compassion fatigue? where you feel so tired to uh, even extend this little bit of kindness, I suppose, to your own self? And how do we recal recalibrate to you know, remind ourselves that uh, I think it's very easy to lose yourself in the equation. So yeah. 
uh, you know, how, how, how do you um, combat this uh, compassion fatigue? How to have compassion for yourself when you're really tired? Mm. Of well, caring. <laughs> tired of caring, yeah. okay. We'll start with small things. You know, start with things that we, we really natural. You know, there's a, a very strong instinct in humans. Um, like, there is, there is no really, there is no time or person where there is no compassion or no care in us, you know, it's, uh, unless you're a complete psychopath. And that would be the definition, a person who has no care, no, f no faculty for care. So, you know, I, I've, I've heard of a lot of programs of like where there's, you know, really delinquent kids and stuff like that. And st one of the big tricks is to bring a very young baby in and just put it on their lap. What I've talked to you about, I've, I've heard, s you know, science reports on this, uh, psychological experiments and so on. But every one of us can do it. And if, if you really feel like I have no care in the world, no ability to care in the world, you know, just go down, you know, go to, uh, you know, hit your lift with one of your friends to the kindy and just grab a kid. <laughs> <laughs> or go to the, the zoo, you know, there's the, the, I don't know if they have here now a, pe a petting <coughs> zoo. You know, grab one of those little guys, <laughs> go for it. And I guarantee you, you'll kickstart some care in there and you know like compassion does need that object of suffering if you can't see your own suffering and stuff like that just just evoke it for something that you can care for so even though i'm starting with care for myself it's really with a baby as an image like i have to kick start it for for myself and everything and just you know build these little plug and plays these you know keep a, an album of these life moments you know, we're very naturally good at remembering very annoying situations, but, you know, it takes that little bit of wisdom and care to just, you know, be with the difficulties and have those, you, you know, memories of caring moments. Those are the real moments of treasure. We're going to be here all afternoon and we're going to have a, a talk, a guided meditation later on, and we're going to be also having group interviews later on. So there's lots of opportunity for people who are staying on to uh, ask questions. But uh, it's time for me to take care of my needs. <laughs> <laughs> this is my last meal. <laughs> okay, uh, let's uh, rejoice again by saying sadhu three times. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So please be in.